In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform exploratory data analysis or EDA in Python using the detail library. And we're starting right now. So the detail library will allow you to quickly perform data pre-processing and also exploratory data analysis right inside the web browser using a Jupyter Notebook or even a Google Colab. And so let's dive in. So I'm going to provide you the links where you could download this particular Colab notebook or Jupyter notebook. And so the first thing that you want to do is to install the detail library. So let's do that using pip install. All right, so now it's installed. And let's start by loading up a data set. And so we're going to start by importing pandas as pd. And then we're going to create a df variable where we will be assigning a data set where we download from the GitHub of Data Professor. And it's going to be the solubility data set. And then we're using the read CSV function to read the CSV data. And let's run this. And now we're going to be using detail. So for one, we're going to import detail, which we will be using for showing the data frame via the detail interface. And in order to allow this to work right inside the Google Colab, we will be needing this particular line. So if you're using a Jupyter Notebook on your own local computer, you could feel free to comment this line. Otherwise, if you're using a Google Colab, then you want to run this line as well. So we're going to run this cell. And there you go. So this particular line use ng rock will allow us to generate this URL. Let's click on it. And so the magic will happen here. And so this is the interface of the detail. And on the top left hand panel here, you're going to see the numbers. And what does the number here represent? So the number in this area here on the right hand side is going to be the number of columns five. And so there are five columns. And the number here, 1,144, represents the number of rows because we have 1,144 rows. And if you hover your mouse at the top, you're going to see the menu bar. And also for the play button here, if you click on it, you could have access to all of the various functionality that you could do with this data frame. So you could think of this as kind of like a GUI or a graphical user interface for your Pandas data frame. So a powerful feature here is that you could perform EDA. For example, let's click on the correlations here. And within a few seconds, you're going to see this heat map of the intercorrelation matrix. So you're going to see how each of the variables here are intercorrelated. And so right off the bat here, we're going to see that there is a negative correlation between log S and the mol log P. And the great thing about this is that the correlation is also color coded as well, where negative correlation will be red and positive correlation will be green. And then at the bottom here, you're going to see that there is a scatter plot between the variables of your choice right here, which is shown here is the mol log P versus the molecular weight. And so you could select the particular columns here and only the correlation between those are shown. And at the top right hand panel here, you can click on the code export and then you will have access to the code that you could use in a future run, meaning that you don't have to rely on this GUI for reproducibility, you could also copy the code and paste it into your code cell of the Jupyter Notebook. So let's try that. Let's copy this code. Let's go back to the Colab, paste the code, and let's run it. Let's copy this correlation data. Okay, and so this is the underlying data of the intercorrelation matrix. So the underlying code is generated for you automatically. Let's go back to the interface. Let's click on the action here. So you can also see that there are functionalities for you to have a look at the missing data in your data set. And so here it is using the missing number library. And so we see that there are no missing data. So let me close this and let's click on the particular column that we want to analyze. And then let's click on describe. 
And so here, are you going to be able to have some descriptive statistics? So for those of you who wants to perform EDA, here you are. You could quickly have a look at the total number of rows, the percent missing data, and here there are none, and the top frequency of values are shown here, as well as the various quartiles, the maximum value, the mean value, median, minimum, number of unique values in this particular column, the standard deviation, the kurtosis, the skew, and also this box plot here. And to generate this, you could click on code export, and you could copy the code. Let's click on it again. Let's have a look at the variance report. And so this variance report will tell us that this particular variable does not have low variance. And shown here is a histogram plot along with the KDE. And so this report will allow you to determine the relative variance of this particular column. So here we could see that out of the total of 1,144, there are 931 unique values. And the most common value is 1.41 and also 7.27. And there are occurrences of seven. And as always, you could click on the code export here to get the code, or you could also modify the number of bins here. And then we get the updated plot. And the great thing is that the plot is also interactive. You could hover your mouse onto a bar and then you see the respective number of frequency. All right, and so let's have a look at another data set with more data. So let me comment the solubility data out, and I'm going to uncomment the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors data sets. Let's run it. Let's run it. And let's run the interface again. And let's click on the link, and it will generate another instance for us. And so let me close the previous one. So for this particular data set, there are 882 columns, 4,695 rows. As you can see here, this data set is comprising of binary values, zero and ones. So we could expect that there will be several variables or several columns that would have low variance, meaning that most of the value will be constant and have no variability. And so we could do that manually or also programmatically, but then that would require some time to write the code. But then you could instantaneously click and have a look. Let me show you. Just click on the play button and then click on the low variance flag. And so you can see here that it literally gives you a red flag and also highlights the particular column in pink color here. And so these columns have low variance. And so typically we would delete these columns because they provide no information owing to the low variance. Let's scroll through here. So we can see that there are quite a few number of columns with low variance. Let's have a look at the heat map again of the correlations. Okay, and so because they have low variance, it is quite impossible to calculate the values here. So ideally, we would have to delete those columns. But also we could just take a quick look. And so you're gonna see that they're impossible to calculate. So I'm going to show you in another video how we could remove those columns having low variance. Let's have a look at the action button again. Let's highlight the D types, highlight by data type. And so they have the same data type, so they're all in the same color. Let's use another data set. Let's comment this one. And let me add penguins here. And let's run it again. And let's click on the link. And then the new interface is loaded up. And as always here, you can see that there are seven columns and 344 rows. And so you can notice here that there are some missing values. And so the data is not clean like the one 
shown previously. Let's try out the other functionality on the missing value. Let's have highlight missing. So you can see here at a glance that the yellow color are the highlighted missing values. And then you can scroll down. So the orange color that you see is indicating that it is currently loading the data. And the blue is the highlighted one. And so yeah, there are quite a few missing values here. Here as well, 339. Let's click on highlight data types. So numbers are highlighted while the categorical are not highlighted. Let's have a look at the correlations. Let's try out another function. How about low variance flag? So apparently there's no low variance here. Let's click on the column and let's have a look at the describe. So these allow you to perform quick descriptive statistics, put value counts, and so you could quickly see the relative frequency of each of the value of this particular column, even for this one as well, for the island. So you can see that Bisco accounted for the most frequency. How about the gender? So roughly similar, but a little bit more male penguins here. 168 versus 165. Okay, so you can see here that there are quite a lot of functionality that you could perform with the detail interface. And so let me know in the comments, which particular function do you like the most? And if you're finding value in this video, please smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and also make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.